Hello everybody and welcome to another tutorial in camera and lens repair. And this time one of my friends asked me if I could uh, take a look at this uh, Sumicron C. Uh, There's an uh, aperture 2 and uh, 40 millimeter focal length. And it has stiff focus ring and uh, loose lens assembly. And there is also something other um, details around the um, the aperture ring itself. Well, it's a bit uh, stiff in a way. So we will um, we'll have a look at it, and you can see the dot, the dot here for the the aperture. It cannot really reach the the two. It cannot come on to the dot here. And the dot, of course, has to be aligned with the index mark. But at the moment, the lens assembly is quite loose. So it's, well, it's, it's easy to align it. But uh, since you put it on the camera, hmm, yeah, <laughs> it will uh, probably move. And as you can see, the, um, the aperture ring itself is actually... Uh, but you say <laughs> move the the whole lens assembly uh, which should not be the case and um, I have been into the lens and actually made some notes about how it actually is uh, because we have to disassemble the whole uh, focus assembly and it's uh, exactly made in a very different way like uh, some other lenses uh, and I actually take some notes around um, how it should sit when it's proper um, yeah let's uh, jump into it we need a bunch of uh, tools <clears throat> I will not go through all the tools but uh, at least some screwdrivers, uh, straight, um, crosshead, dentist tool, tweezers, uh, special homemade uh, wrench, uh, I mean lens tool <laughs> that is really good for retaining ring on this lens. And I actually made it out of a wrench, um, 40, 24 millimeter, uh, high quality steel. And um, there is actually two pins you probably can see it here and there is one over here and um, yeah we will also need some cleaning fluid it's uh, isopropyl alcohol 99% and we will also need some grease for the focusing ring and I think I would like the liquid molly LM47 MOS 2 uh, which I think could be a nice thing for this uh, focus ring also need some solvent uh, I mean nail polish remover because uh, as I walk uh, I was uh, when I disassemble or try to disassemble the retaining ring it sits extremely hard so um, and there are probably other people who have been into this lens at least the front ring here because um, it doesn't sit correct and I could see a lot of mark underneath which uh, I mean scratch when I um, dig into it it um, yeah let's do it and um, we simply begin with the um, uh, with the mount here which sit with with the uh, five screws and we will our reference in this case will be the index mark and um, so it will be like this and this retaining ring here hopefully you can see it um, with the two uh, cutouts here and here it is very tight so I figure out 
then uh, I try first with the uh, with the uh, oh where did it go it's uh, <laughs> it's a propyl alcohol but it didn't work so I try with the uh, nail polish remover with acetone it's the acetone that does the job <clears throat> in this case so first I um, of course it will be a lot easier to come into because I have been into it before so your uh, retaining ring the retaining ring in your lens uh, will probably be very hard if it's first time you into the lens so I use a, uh, a cotton bud a lot of a lot of drops of um, nail polish remover and I go under when you can see here not out here but there so you have to be against the the actual retaining ring and there there has you have to add a lot uh, of uh, drops of of uh, nail polish remover or you could just use uh, pure uh, acetone it will probably do <clears throat> do it any better and um, when it's um, actually <clears throat> sucked in a lot it's time to actually take off the retaining ring but I found out uh, by um, <clears throat> sorry that it is more easy to first take off the name ring and the name ring I thought okay I could take off the name ring itself it sits with a tiny set screw here so I think okay off of that and it's tiny as I can say just put it in a safe place and then you can uh, probably if it sits too tight use a lens tool or we could probably use the uh, rubber cone in this case and again I tried to unscrew the retaining ring with the rubber cone and it didn't work at all but for now it's um, simply unscrew this uh, front ring here so and uh, the front lens is actually not exposed if you put it straight on this on your desk it will not scratch anything so it's off but um, that will be, be begin with <laughs> <clears throat> but first the the uh, five screws here on the back and they were not really that hard I mean some of them but use a good screwdriver straight a flat head and um, it will be fine I will use a uh, thread lock on this uh, on those screws when I put it back in again I think it will be fine and keep it last thing longer so the screws are magnetic and it's all the same size and length so there shouldn't be any problem with that mm -hmm. here ah. it's sometimes easier to use a smaller screwdriver I mean not diameter but the shorter one and the last one So that's it. So now we can put on and take off the mount. 
nothing special about that it's just a mount and uh, in that way we cannot actually get any further in that way everything will be from when the retaining ring is out and uh, we can pull out the whole lens assembly lens uh, uh, aperture assembly and it's also a good uh, thing to know that coming into those two screws one there one there uh, you can unscrew them but it's actually meant that you have the whole lens aperture assembly out and work with those because we also have to unscrew I mean take out the uh, aperture ring itself uh, to come into more details about that but um, as I found out uh, it was because the retaining ring was so tight so I found out a good uh, rubber gasket something like that from the plumber section in the hardware store and it actually fits quite good here and the point is it is extremely sticky so it's good to actually press it very hard and then with the lens my lens tool here uh, you could probably use another one like the uh, this kind of a spinner uh, but still the ring is so extremely tight so I would think hmm it's better to have something that keep it in the place here because slipping yeah not good so I can put it over here and catch the two notch and simply unscrew it still uh, because I haven't cleaned the glue out the thread lock out they have used back then so it's still a bit tight but as, as you can see I have a good grip on this tool so it's really took some half hour to make uh, with my uh, grinder so you can see it's uh, then we can use a rubber tool to unscrew it makes things a little easier so now it's loose and you can probably see the the white stuff here on the thread uh, which is the old thread lock um, and it was actually tight so now we can uh, take out the the uh, lens uh, aperture assembly simply by pull off pull off the focusing assembly that's how it looks not really much and remember there is a spacer underneath here and um, so it is and the aperture ring was al also a bit tight so there is a um, there is a, a lock ring here that you can take off and lift out the aperture ring but one thing to remember is uh, since we are here now um, just have to show you this because on one side of uh, the aperture ring there is I mean this is the connection pin into the actual uh, in inner aperture ring but on the other side there is a little steel ball here hopefully you can see it a little steel ball and a little spring under the screw and it's also under the aperture ring so um, yeah let's first take the the uh, the focusing 
helicoids. <coughs> it's not that hard to work, work on. Um, but uh, yeah, it's really stiff. So by coming into that, we need to set marks before we start it. So set the uh, focusing ring at infinity. That's the main start. I mean, <laughs> the rare start. So inside here, the inner uh, helicoid, which is a shiny ring here, um, and the outer, there is only two uh, helicoids actually. But this is the focusing ring that is connected with three screws to the uh, middle. Yeah, the outer helicoid must be. <laughs> um, and at infinity, set a mark here in line with the here. And the next part here is actually a kind of a helicoid key. And uh, you also set a mark here at infinity in line with the index mark here. I also set another mark here because it will make it easier when you put it, I mean, when you disassemble it, so you know the correct position by having two marks. So um, that's it. Uh, we dig into that with the three screws. Unscrew those. They are also magnetic, so there is no problem here. So, and it's actually crosshead. It's a, it's a funny mix of crosshead screws and uh, straight, I mean, flathead screws. So one can take off the, the uh, focusing ring itself. You can see a lot of old grease in here. Uh, which is sticky and so. And by the way, <coughs> if the uh, focusing knob is loose, well, there's actually sitting a screw in here which you can tighten if it's come to that way. So keep the screws in place. So now we look further into the actual um, helicoid. And I do some measure, which is my notes here, which I think it's very, very important uh, when working with those. Uh, I mean, there is no repair manual for this lens. I haven't found it yet. So at infinity, so the focusing system is at infinity at the moment. Uh, where's my measure tool? We also need a caliber. Uh, which is perfect for that. Since I cannot measure from the very front to the back because it's, it's, it's actually the bigger part here. So I need to measure the depth of it. And by doing that here, I actually put it on here and press down. It should be something like 71, I mean, zero, 71 millimeter. Um, and uh, yeah, it depends. So I think it must be something like that. <clears throat> and I measure from the outer helicoid, which would say here. And it sticks out a little more than the inner helicoid at infinity. So I also set a mark here uh, underneath in line with the other mark here. So I know exact position that, of that. And now I can actually disassemble the, uh, the helicoid assembly from the outer ring here with the index mark. And uh, where is my... Yeah, I also mentioned 
the little spacer underneath here with the uh, lens assembly in this case could be different in your case is 1.53 millimeter d uh, thickness yours could maybe d be a little thicker or thinner but uh, where is my screwdriver so all for those three screws here and you can see the you hopefully you can <laughs> this is uh, the helicoid key and it's actually sit screwed into the to the uh, outer uh, with the uh, ring with the index mark and uh, I also set a mark up here in line with the index mark here so I know the exact position just to not get confused about okay where should it sit correct hope it it makes it a little more clear and off with the other one the last one <laughs> it sits with the red dot which is not here so there all for those <coughs> And then I can take out that uh, helicoid key, which you can see here. Really, really dirty and yeah, old gunky <laughs> uh, grease. <coughs> yeah, so it is. And now I can, um, you see the old colored grease, which is really, really sticky not really much yeah maybe someone has used some old grease and I mean spray into it but it I don't think so now then I can pop out the the actual uh, helicoy assembly which you can see come out here and so it's off then I have the the the, the naked helicoid assembly, and um, my main I mean my what do you say my reference mark here when I, I uh, unscrew the helicoid uh, the inner helicoid from the outer is my uh, infinity mark up here, and that's the main goal to end it up when I put it back in again so you can see I cannot really uh, measure from which distance should I measure so it's easier to measure from the inner to the outer I mean the depth so and when I unscrew it it has to turn a little over than three quarter to around um, it will come off at around 10 o'clock so if we see here this is 12 o'clock and over here it's something like you can see I already set a mark but it will be around uh, 10 o'clock or so so and that's very very important set a mark before the helicoid gets off the thread it's a multi-thread uh, helicoid, so you will not. Well, you will. It will take some time before you actually can find the right thread. So, wow, it's really, really stiff in here. And since I come closer to the off point, which you of course not have, but you have to have a feeling of the um, when it gets more loose, or the closer you get to the. Um, I mean the more the helicoid comes out so you will have a kind of it should be something like move a little move a little yeah here it off 
And then you set a mark here. It will say something like you have the my starting point, I mean my um, index mark, and then you set a mark here. It will be the off point. And uh, if you get the wrong thread, well, you will get the wrong focus when it's put on the camera. Not good. So now we have a really uh, sticky grease <laughs> helicoid. So <laughs> um, I will just put it into some some isopropyl alcohol and uh, yeah. So it is. Uh, see you soon. Now. And now I will. Uh, I have just cleaned the helicoid with the uh, well. It didn't work with the uh, isopropyl alcohol, so I use uh, lighter fluid. Yeah, so it is outside. <laughs> it stinks a lot. But now the helicoy uh, are actually, it looks actually okay. I mean, they are old, so there is not so much I can do about it. But they, they run really good. And... Um, so I'll try to use the uh, liquid molly, which I think is uh, actually a very good grease for many things. Uh, maybe it it will work here. I hope so. Um, and a fine brush, makeup brush, something, and I put a stand on it so it can just it will not <laughs> roll away. As you can see, it works pretty good. Now we will. I will add some, uh, not so much, it doesn't have to be full of grease all over the place, it's just a thin film. And I simply will start with the inner helicoid. So uh, I'm really uh, looking forward to see how it will actually work on this. It's actually a fine thread uh, helicoid, so it will be good to see how the grease is actually working here. Maybe it's too much, maybe it's too, uh, what do you say, thick. I mean, I have used. I have used it on, on thread that is, I mean, finer than this one, and I think it uh, actually was good. But, <clears throat> and you also have to have uh, grease here on the gap where the, where the uh, helicoid key here is actually have to slide through. <clears throat> and again it doesn't have to be much so I think it will be that will be fine enough for that and uh, yeah let's see so back to my starting point it will be where the where my um, index mark is at infinity and I have to find my my off mark here on the the outer helicoid which uh, up here there is a sign here where the um, where the intake mark is. So I have to have gently put it in and uh, catch the the thread. It has to say click in a way. You can feel it it go it um, you have to work a little with it. So there I'll click there. Hmm. 
And since there are many threads, yeah, here we have it. Wow. I mean, that's really good. This thread is simply very good. I mean, haha, <laughs> it works really good. So move it uh, a lot so the grease can come into all threads. But I think the the consistency of the grease is extremely good. I'm quite happy with this. Wow, and there's no not too much left. So I can just say it's it's a success and uh, just use a cutting butt to wipe away the rest of it don't have to be too much so like this and of course this has to go into the index ring and it also have to be uh, grease it, as you can see. So um, also here on the inner here, and also especially on the this uh, area here, where it slides against with the bottom part, but also on the side here, you will need it. Wow, I'm really happy with this grease. And since it has been in this container for many, 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 many months, and it's still not separate. So I think it will, it's, I'm quite happy with this uh, grease. So you also see the, the black area here um, on the side, not the outer, but the inner here. Uh, there has to be just a tiny, uh, I mean, thin layers of uh, grease. So, um, let's see how it will go. Now put it in the index ring mark here and try to put it in here. How will it go? I think it also need the the grease on the um, wow feels like butter yeah it needs a little more especially on this side here So I know it's it's not the ideal uh, grease for everything, but at the moment I have used it in a lot of lenses, and uh, I'm still satisfied with it. Yeah. 
and let's see if I take it out again how much is still on the no I think it's I think it's all fine maybe wipe a little way in here so there is just a thin film I, th I would think no that's it and of course there also have to be something on the um, let's see when I put it in there's there also have to be something on this ring underneath uh, because this slides against uh, I mean the uh, this uh, the outer helicoid will slide against this ring here so there also have to be a thin film and of course on the helicoid key here I'll just add a little And uh, yeah, I think we can put it in. Something like that. So there it is. And it will sit here. You have to align the holes in here. So let's put in one screw and and, and um, see how it will work. But for now, it uh, I think it, it, it uh, I think it, it um, it's a good grease for that. Yeah. So. At least it was quite stiff before, so uh, it can only it can only be better. I think just to give it some movement when the focusing ring comes on, and. Uh, Over there and the last screw here comes in there just uh, tighten them gently at the moment for now and wow now that's actually good Let's see. Yeah. It's actually really good if I can move the the focusing ring without using too much force. I would say it's it's all fine. Maybe someone else want to have a more buttery or stiff focusing rain well it's yeah so not too much and it looks also fine on the back here not too much grease on where it should not be so I think I'll tighten the screws and uh, we can also just <laughs> measure here how it looks and as you can see it's 
the same as it was before. So it's my main goal that um, it's all fine. Tighten the screws good. And this one. Now the focusing ring comes on. And since I also set the mark here in the beginning, I don't know the exact position of that. And since we started out with the uh, uh, infinity and all the marks are in line, I can just put the focusing ring on and uh, say, wow, that's good. So I think I will use some thread lock on the actually focusing ring because yeah I think it uh, it will just be better just a tiny drop of something on a piece of paper doesn't have to be much shake it well before use as they said So that's all fine. It has to be on the thread. So there. Don't tighten it yet. Just have to have all screws in. So, and the last one. Yeah, wow. Now that's really good. Tighten the screws good and the thread lock will actually sit where it should. So now, wow, now that's absolutely amazing. Feels like, I mean, you can use a little finger to use it. That's good in my opinion <laughs> I didn't I mean it's always uh, yeah um, what you say exciting to see if it, it will, will go or not but the focusing system is actually done now next thing is the focusing black the aperture ring <laughs> come on get it um, the aperture ring was uh, actually quite stiff in this, and um, but it's not the the actual outer the uh, outer um, aperture ring that was stiff. It's more the inside. The I mean the the ring that actually moved the blade. So if we set it to aperture two, full open, and. Uh, there is a lock ring on the back, <coughs> which we need to take off. It will say we need to have something that it can stand on here. Yeah. And with a dentist tool or something like that, we can unclip, I mean, have a grip on the one end. You see there is a gap between the two ends here. Then I can put in a, a dentist tool or something like a thin, maybe a thin screwdriver. We can try that. And simply lift it up a little. You see, sometimes it's better with a dentist tool. It's more, they are more pointy, in my opinion. <laughs> well, at least most of the time. 
and now you can see it's it's up sits up on the side so I can use another dentist tool to un unclip it without bending it or uh, destroying it so it's easy to come around here so and then it's off nice and fine now the um, the aperture ring is still connected to the inner uh, hell I mean the inner <laughs> aperture uh, part and uh, we first need to as I said in the beginning there is a little steel ball and a little spring underneath behind the screw and under the the aperture ring so with a uh, fine screwdriver 1.2 millimeter in this case I can unscrew this set screw see it comes out and underneath that there is a spring and for that I will use my um, dentist tool to pick it out hopefully one could also use a if the screw tire is magnetic you could simply pull it out in that way and the same thing with will happen with the tiny steel ball in here hopefully it will come out and it sticks to the to my uh, screwdriver because of my, it is magnetic so you see those three parts and I uh, to make it more easy I actually set a little mark where the the long set screw which is the screw that goes into the uh, part in here the ring so I set a little mark um, actually here around the uh, the numbers set it here so it's in line with with the uh, aperture 2 on the aperture ring so you can see I set a little mark down here you could do the same or you could just use a permanent marker to to make set a mark down here or so just to remember because this screw is way too long and it will not work on the other side it will say you cannot put it in here so we just need to have it uh, like this and screw unscrew the the long screw you see it's different from the other one put it aside and then we can um, take out the whole lens assembly out of the aperture ring and now it will maybe be a little difficult because I have to unscrew the front retaining ring that hold the front lens group and in that way um, come into the to the uh, yeah here you can see it come into the ring inside here which is a bit sticky you probably can see the little gap here this is here and um, it's a bit sticky so I don't know if I can take it out or the whole uh, aperture assembly will come out I don't know because I haven't go been that further into it but um, as you can see here which is good the uh, rubber tool the Japanese hobby tool cones with the number five you can actually put the lens assembly on which is good you can park it here and in that way hopefully we can come into that 
the the ring inside and I will use the the number one two three four to hopefully get that ring out and again I have been into the lens I mean I have been into that uh, unscrew the the ring itself and for that I use a lot of uh, I mean some um, nail polish remover and simply add it to the um, on the side here I mean on the edge of the and since I've been into it it will be probably much more easy to unscrew and you simply add a few drops maybe more maybe less and let it sit a little so it can soften the the uh, thread lock so over that <clears throat> now I should be able to by using the two tools here to unscrew it and if it uh, actually sits quite good here Now it's free, but it was not the case in the beginning, because the the, the ring sits quite tight. So let's see how it will go. So I set the aperture to full open. I think it will work, but. Um, of course, since I haven't been into it fully, I don't know yet, but let's see. Now, having a uh, lens sucker, which is very good for that. And not having too much dust around it. I can simply try to with the lens sucker is also from Japan Hobby Tool. No, <laughs> I am not sponsored by any company. Uh, just to get that, make that clear. Now put it on the front lens, and um, again, one thing I mentioned, I forgot to mention, it is that it is a good thing to set a mark somewhere. Um, so you will know the exact position of this lens and then there is already a mark here i simply set a mark in here in the gap in here so i know the position of where it should be maybe it's uh, important maybe not but just in case so put it on and lift out the lens uh, and we have to put it on something uh, at least uh, something smaller then could be this one one of the gray lens tools so let's see take it out No, it was not that. I would like to have the the next um, next lens group, and uh, hopefully I can lift it out. I didn't know the uh, the first. I mean, the front lens came out. So I will make it that and just pop it into my hand by this so hopefully it will come out yeah here it is oh put it on a safe place and let it stay there for a little 
<coughs> now this will be interesting I think I will set a little mark not a scratch but a little mark where the the little uh, what do you say the <laughs> cut out or the gap is so I know the exact position that's it and now come the interesting thing do will I be able to actually what do I have tool here to simply take out the ring without the blades let's see if it's possible hope so um, let's see if it's possible maybe this one will be a good thing so here if I can lift it up there doesn't have to be any other hmm. it's quite stiff in the movement yeah you can see it's a bit uh, stiff in that I mean dry at least so how the hell do I do that maybe dentist tool need more dentist tools <laughs> If I can dig under the blade, then I should be able to do this. Uh, hopefully, it will not be a mess. Sorry for maybe disturbing the camera here. It is not easy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, here we go. Next step. Next step. yeah I think I will make it yes it comes out and holding down the blades and with a tweezer having the ring out and of course I have to Press down the blades so they will not move at all. Wow. <laughs> well, that was uh, interesting. You see, here the uh, there are some old traces of grease or whatever it is, and it makes it a little stiff. Yeah, if I use my glove here and uh, it, it's quite sticky in a way it's not soft like the other parts here so is there is definitely <coughs> some old uh, greasy stuff or whatever it is um, I think I will use some isopropyl alcohol for that and simply add a little on a curtain butt so just uh, wipe the old stuff away from this ring you can see it's quite uh, dirty 
so there is no need for making too much out of it. Maybe there is another way of doing it, I don't know. I think there is no no idea to take hold the the whole um, blades out. It will take too much time to put them back again. So I think I will just do this. And you can see it's clear. I mean, clean. And it works pretty good compared to the other end, uh, which was dirty. Now it's fine. But of course, there is something on in here. But that's the more tricky part. But by using smaller uh, cotton buds, some of those small, uh, I would think it. Uh, I think it will I will be able to just walk around on the edge here without touching the blades. And hopefully Yeah, there is also traces of old stuff. And I think it's uh, it doesn't need any grease on this ring. I mean, normally there is no grease on the aperture blades or the aperture parts in lenses. So I think it will be the same here. Looks like there is something on one blade. See if there is. Okay, let's see here. Interesting. Yeah, it comes away. Well, there was just a little dirty area here. Now then I should be able to put in the ring. And since I set a mark here in the beginning, <coughs> I know the exact position of where it should be. So maybe I have to align the blades uh, one end of it. I would think so. <coughs> so Hmm. Now, almost there is any blades in here. The correct position, maybe the the ring has to be moved a little. Fully. There's one blade over here that is not in place, but with a dentist tool, so hmm. 
Hey, hey. Yeah, I think so. <clears throat> it looks like it, it feels a lot more better to actually move the ring. Yeah. Well, that's fine. Hehe. <laughs> Yeah, you see, the old grease was uh, not really good. So I can add the the front lens group, put it in. Yeah, it has to sit there. And I should be able to add it over and lower it so here we are again back on track now that's fine he <laughs> he so I can add the retaining ring and say that's all fine for now and just put the Let's assembly back into the focusing system. Let's see here. And simply tighten the ring good. <clears throat> so it will not fall out. Now, let's see how it, how good it will be. Yeah, so much better. I think it's fine. Full open aperture there. And, uh, yeah, it also needs some cleaning of the old lubrication. Just to get rid of that. Yeah, it's all gunky, dirty. Grease. So the click function will uh, at least works better than it was. So, fine. Fine for now. Then I can uh, just to see where's the aperture ring here. Yeah, it's also also needs some care. When I'm in here, anyway. And I think it will be fine to add some little grease for the aperture ring so it will be have a better lighter movement. And it doesn't have to be much where is my this one? I think it's fine for now, but it also needs some on the edge here, where it goes against the the um, the lens assembly. 
I think yeah it must be have must have something just a tiny amount of grease so and then we can give it some movement let's see where's the gap it's over here closest to the aperture 2 wow much better well it was actually <laughs> on the on the wrong place now the amount I put on here was actually fine but it was just the wrong place so just need a it's not too much in here so doesn't have to be grease on the wrong place so it's fine that's it where is the hmm? this gap is here so then I can put it on here and then add the the lock ring Maybe it's a little messy in here. So So it's all fine, I think. And I can add the aperture ring. I mean <laughs> the lock ring blah and it should be quite easy to put on just to uh, put it on one end and it's much easier with the dentist tool just press it down here and then go go on around it click into place wow well that's work that works <laughs> so I can um, set the aperture ring, aperture ring to 2 because then I know <coughs> the position of where I set the mark here uh, earlier so I can add this along screw and I should be able to catch the the little gap in the inner aperture ring maybe if I'm lucky no not yet set it to there I think there and maybe I have to wiggle a little just to get it into place so and then screw it all the way in not all the way in but just so it catches the ring. Now that's better. I mean, before it was quite stiff. I mean, still, it's a used lens, so it has some years uh, on the back. So now I can put in the aperture steel ball and the tiny spring. This is still here. 
there. If we can come off the screwdriver. <laughs> so. And the tiny spring. So. And then the, uh, the screw. The tiny set screw. So, and maybe I should add a little thread lock on that. Ah, there wasn't much. Eh. And I will, of course, also do it on the other screw. And you, you will be able to unscrew the screw with this uh, thread lock because it's not the hard one. So, and do not screw it fully in, just a little. So the click function. Wow. That's all fine. Yeah. Because if you if you screw it in too much, you will lock the the spring and the steel ball so it, it will be hard to move just like this. So I have to be loosened a little. Something like that. Just enough so the spring has some tension to the screw and it will stay there. So now it's much, wow, feels good. That's fine and we'll just do the other one. Set it to two or so and then add a little thread lock. much that's it put it back in again and we can say that part of it is all fine maybe I have forgotten something or maybe I haven't done it correct if but uh, I think all in all it's ended up with a very much better result. So um, the next thing is um, it is to put in the lens assembly into the into the um, focus assembly. And we have to use some thread lock on the uh, on the back retaining ring. <clears throat> and don't forget to put in the spacer here before you actually put in the the um, put it into the focusing assembly. So now I've set it to aperture 2, full open, and uh, then we'll just put it in. So the aperture 2 is in line with the index mark. Then everything should be fine. So I will add some, not just a tiny amount, but some thread lock here. Uh, where is the trees? I mean, so I 
I do not have the hot one of the thread lock, but I would think if I add a good amount, it will work. I think it will still be fine. So now it will be put in here. Catch the thread of the retaining ring. Click. And now I can easily move my focusing ring and put in my special homemade tool. And tighten the retaining good. Just to make sure it sits correct, fully open, it has to sit in line with the aperture too, something like that, and tighten the retaining ring a lot. But it's better <coughs> to have a, where's that bloody tool gone? <coughs> As I did, it, did before when I took it apart, this uh, rubber tool here, gasket, it's really good because it's so sticky. Then I can tighten the, the retaining ring. Really good. So, <coughs> yeah. <coughs> I mean, that's really good. And the, how is the focusing? Wow. Now that's splendid. So, again, the liquid molly, I mean, I can use my pinky finger to just move it without any problem. Wow! <laughs> <clears throat> That's great. Now on with the, um, the the mount, and again I will use uh, thread lock on that. Let's see how it is. Index mark here. This is here. <clears throat> you see the lock here is close to the the red dot. So uh, where's the screws and some thread lock here? <clears throat> so in not so long ago we are done. Then the front ring. Oops, there. So it was not only about the the uh, stiff focus, it was also about the aperture ring, the retaining ring, <coughs> and all that stuff. All compressed down into one <laughs> video. Over there. And I think it's also important to have all the measurement <coughs> uh, when you're working with the focusing system. It's really important. So there and 
number three, I think, number four. Sometimes it's easier with a short screwdriver. So there. <coughs> And just uh, tighten the screws. Good. one so so we just need to have wow it's it's really good <clears throat> now next thing is the uh, the front ring name ring and I think I will also add a little uh, thread lock on here because uh, the dot was sitting in the wrong place Um, and it looks like the the ring here was glued into place. So um, if I can put it on here, yeah, that's fine. And I don't think I will uh, add any thread lock to the front ring. So uh, just have the dot, the little dot here has to be in line with the and you cannot really put it I mean tighten it good so it have to be one turn before and then has it into correct place there and then tighten the little set screw here And now we are back on uh, a normal condition for this uh, lens. And I think I will just give it some uh, so it looked nice and fine. Just add a little um, optical cleaner eclipse in this case. So it all looks fine. And also on the back here, where there was some. Yeah. That's all fine. <coughs> so, um, and now we are back on the, uh, on this lens. So it's back to normal. But everything works really good, especially the focus. Wow. <laughs> so the um, I think the liquid molly is actually a good grease in many cases. That's it for now. Hope you enjoy the content in uh, this video and can be useful for you. Uh, see you in another video. Bye bye.